Let's try it again. All right, welcome to state and local government, February 21st, 2022. This is take two, which is why I'm laughing and Rob and Eli are laughing <laughs> here. Uh, we are going to finish the PowerPoint we've been working on today. Um, if you saw the blue sign on the door and left, shame on you. Uh, because that class was Dennis Ellison's communications class held at 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, so if you saw that sign and just walked away, shame, shame, shame. That's all I've got to say, but that's why I'm recording this lecture. Um, so the test will be held next Wednesday. And it will cover everything that we've talked about so far, which isn't actually a which is a lot, but it doesn't look like a lot up on Blackboard. It's uh, federalism and the Illinois Constitution, which makes for a actually quite a big test. Uh, but I do have good news um, about that because due to a situation that your classmate, uh, one of your classmates finds himself, I think that's okay. Yeah, uh, we're going to put, uh, we're, I'm going to put the test online. So the test will be open from next Wednesday until the following Wednesday. Now, because I'm doing this and you're getting a week to take the test and all that, um, I mean, uh, I'm not at all going to be lenient about uh, makeups, or if you email me on Tuesday night before class, and say, Tuesday night, the day before it's due, and say, I haven't had time to start this because of this, that, the other thing. I, I'm, I'm not going to have sympathy. And students have been in the past very surprised because I typically do, um, but you you have a whole week to take this and you have a whole week to figure this out. So do it, you know, and if there are problems, the sooner you let me know, the sooner you take the test. I mean, the, the more time we're going to have to troubleshoot and get done what needs to be done. So that's that. Understand? Good. So let's, um, begin with the judicial department. We'll talk about the Illinois, Supreme Court. I think we might have left off, we might have gone through this, but a little review never hurts anybody. So there are seven justices on the Supreme Court. They're elected to a 10 year term, and we have five appellate court districts that we elect them from. There are three justices that come from Cook County because, you know, Cook. Cook County. <laughs> it is where most of the people in the state happen to live. So, uh, and one justice from the other, each of the other districts. So the justices themselves, as I think we did talk about, because this is sounding familiar, do come um, together and select their own chief. It used to be Lloyd Carmeyer. Now it's Ann. I blanked. Uh, Ann Burke, Ann M. Burke. <laughs> that might be a name, Ann Burke, that I would remember for the test. So this court, like the United States Supreme Court, doesn't have to accept any case. It can pick its cases, pick and choose, except when there's a death penalty case. They have to hear those, unlike the U.S. Supreme Court, who can pick and choose every case. Law of the land, this land, Illinois, dictates that they have to hear these death penalty cases. What if there was a, uh, like a death penalty for like a federal crime? Would the federal Supreme Court still be able to pick and choose? Or would it just be... So the question was, if there was a death penalty case involved for a federal crime, would the U.S. Supreme Court still be picking and choosing? The answer to that is yes. They would still pick and choose. There would be, 
probably heavy lobbying uh, to get the court to hear that. And, and I, they do hear a lot of those. Um, they're not indifferent to those cases, but they don't have to hear anything at all, the U.S. Supreme Court, that they don't want to hear. So appellate courts hear appeals from the circuit courts. And there are five, as we mentioned, appellate districts, one in Chicago, one in Elgin, one in Ottawa, Springfield, and Mount Vernon. I would remember those. Those might end up on the test as well. I try to not do so much of the repetition, you know, the rote, mem rote memorization stuff on these tests, but sometimes you, you can't get away from it. You should know who the governor of Illinois is. I just, uh, some colleagues and students disagree with that. You should know who the president of the United States is. You should know, you know, that you live in. Especially important figures. Tom you can get away with it, but. Yeah, well, I mean, not for my test one. You should, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know who the comptroller was in everyday life, but if you're a state and local government student in my class, you should know who, who the comptroller is. But I do think it's important to know that you live in the fourth appellate district and you vote for a judge on the Supreme Court from the fourth appellate district that meets in Springfield. That's just something I, I think you, you really should be aware of. And we elect for 10 year terms. We have 54 appellate judges in Illinois, that number is set by the General Assembly. So there's a lot more say. The, uh, I mean, the judiciary is independent. It's an independent, co-equal branch of government in the state of Illinois, just like it is in the federal court. But there is more control by the legislature and the executive. They have more of a say into who sits on the court and why and when. And, for how long? So the circuit courts hear most trials. That's where most everything starts out. You're going to go to a circuit court. I showed you that video um, last week of, of Judge Caprio lost in Providence. A great TV show, by the way. I'm looking right at the camera. <laughs> that you that you should watch. Clips are available on YouTube. I wonder if I'll get royalties for that put it up <laughs> link. Hey, lost in Providence. I, <laughs> I'm plugging you in my class, but they'll hear most trials because, you know, most things that go to court are, you know, kind of minutia like traffic tickets, you know, most it, you're going five over. It's not the end of the world. It, <laughs> it can go, you know, into a circuit court. We have 23 judicial circuits. Now, can circuit, don't circuit courts also have like a court of appeals in the sense? So, okay, again, the question, just in case you, you're not hearing it on my phone, which I think might happen, um, it was asked if the circuit court has its own court of appeals. So if I get like this letter back from, you know, Springfield, whatever, saying like you have a court date, I think I would go to, like it's in DuPage, uh, mm -hmm. I think I would go to DuPage to uh, kind of like file a motion to appeal. Now would I also go to court in DuPage or would I go in like go you... or Chicago or Springfield, if you know what I mean? Now, I'm going to get laughed at because I'm probably going to give you the wrong answer, but to the best of my understanding, you have to go stand in the court in the district where the crime was committed. So you would have to go back to 
DuPage, and that is its own. This is what it, it means by judicial but circuits. I just wanted to make sure this was appellate courts as well. So I wasn't sure if I'm trying to, you know, motion to appeal or whatever. You know what I mean? To yeah. have the, their rejection overlooked and or you know, looked over and reversed. Yeah, you you wouldn't deal with that down here. You would have your lawyer. Are you representing yourself, or are you? Um, for this, I would I would end up getting a lawyer at that point. Yeah, so you would have your lawyer lawyer appeal. The process would, again, to the best of my understanding, would be appealed to the appeals court court of appeals in the district of DuPage. Okay, that's why I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, not a, not a problem. Again, I'm perfectly prepared to be wrong, but that's how I understand it. No, I get it. Yeah. I'm sure you would know more about that than I would. <laughs> well, I've not had your experience either. <laughs> so, um, so there is a chief circuit judge in each, each court. Uh, there are additional circuit judges. There are associate judges. These people make a lot of money, a lot of money. We elect circuit judges for six-year terms. They can be retained for additional six-year terms. Uh, they can hear any circuit court case. So there are associate judges appointed on this circuit also, and they serve terms of four years. Now let's look at the difference. Yeah. Because it's been over two years since I've taught this class, and I am not too proud to admit that I've quite forgotten. If you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> that's, that's about it, yeah. 